This is an explanation of how to use the carry UV vis spectrophotometer. So when you come to use it, it should be turned off. So the first thing you want to do is to use this red button and turn it on. You may hear it click and make some noises as it uh, starts up. That's normal. Next thing you want to do is to make sure that the proper uh, sampling accessory is loaded. So the simplest one and the one that should be in there um, when you start is just the uh, standard cuvette holder. This allows you to do either single beam or dual beam experiments with a single sample at room temperature. If you want to do multiple samples or uh, other than room temperature, you'll need to take out this holder. Um, to do that, you can use this hex wrench. There's a couple of screws in here that you'll need to take out. And you can either loosen them or you can take them out entirely. Get it there. And then you can just lift and slide out this holder here. You can take out the screw entirely. Now, uh, for temperature uh, dependent experiments, you can use this sample block here. It can hold up to 12 different samples and it uses a Peltier to adjust the temperature uh, slightly above or below room temperature. Um, if you're going to use temperature control, you need to make sure that you turn on the water circulator. There's a red switch on the front. This provides cooling water to the Peltier device. As you're loading this in, you need to attach these cables here on the bottom. It's a little bit difficult to do, but it is possible to do. There's a large one that goes on the large plug and a small one that goes on the small plug. This plate here goes in place of this removable plate to allow the water circulator to pass in and out while still blocking the light. I'm not going to load this at this time, but you can see if you have any questions, you can talk to Instrument Center staff about how to install this accessory. We have another accessory, which is the integrating sphere. That's stored in this black case right here. To load the integrating sphere, it has its own detector, which is uh, sensed through this cable here. To uh, connect that cable, it connects on the front, not on the bottom, as the sample changer does. So you want to plug it in on the front. And then there's an alignment pin here on the, on the front. And then you would want to install the screws, just as you would for any of the other accessories. I'm not going to completely install it. The way that this works is your sample goes in this holder here, so it's typically on a slide. This wedge allows you to do diffuse reflectance, so the sample is held at an angle, or you can also take out the wedge and do it straight on to hold it for specular reflectance. Um, if you need to zero it, there is a puck here. This puck is supposed to be pure white, and it would get clamped in here to do zero. And of course, remember that you need to have the stray light blocked as you're doing the experiment, like that. So I'm going to take out the puck. And I'm going to take out the integrating sphere. And put back the standard cuvette holder. This goes over here under the instrument. Okay, so we put back the standard cuvette holder. It's 
probably easiest to get the hex screws started a little bit. And then you can slide it in place. And then tighten it down. Okay, so there are a variety of experiments you can do. I'm just going to show you a couple of the most basic ones. So I'm going to put a single sample in, single beam mode, and put the front back on. Make sure that everything is set so it blocks out all of the light. Now the software, all of the different modes are separate programs, and they're all located here in this carry win UV folder. So you can double click on the folder to open up the different programs here. The most common programs are simple reads. What simple reads does is it will monitor a single wavelength at a single point in time. So if you just want to measure the absorbance at a particular wavelength, Hang on, it's got to initialize. Let's restart it just to make sure that it's OK. I think that's probably because we have the integrating sphere in there. Yes, so now it's OK. So to use the simple reads, what you would do is you would put in your blank sample, which would either be an empty cuvette or a cuvette with the solution, but not whatever uh, material is absorbing. So just buffer, for example. And then you can zero it. And the absorbance should go to zero. And then you can put in your sample. and you can measure the absorbance at a particular wavelength. If you wanted to measure a different wavelength, you can go to setup and change the wavelength here. You can change whether it's absorbance or transmission and measure the absorbance at another wavelength. Now another mode that you may want to use is the scan mode. If you wanted to, you should save your data. We'll go over that in a uh, later time. Scan mode is a scan program here. This is for collecting a spectrum at a variety of wavelengths. So on this one, there's a couple things that you may want to do. We're waiting for it to initialize. You'll see down in the lower hand corner here, if it's uh, initializing now, and then these will turn red if it's ready to go. So if we go to setup, if you have uh, some of these sampling accessories in, there may be options under accessories here. If you want to do baseline, go to baseline and uh, indicate what you want to do. So let's do, for example, zero slash baseline correction. So we'll click OK. Oh, and we can uh, change the, the scan range. So, for example, we could scan from 600 to 300 wave numbers. Be aware that um, to go to the ultraviolet, um, you will need quartz cuvettes. Uh, glass and plastic cuvettes will absorb in the ultraviolet, and you'll just not see any uh, spectrum at that point. Um, so set the, the limits here. If you want to scan more quickly, you can adjust either the averaging time or the data interval. The defaults here should be reasonable, but you may want to adjust these if you know why you have a reason to. For example, you could scan at larger intervals or uh, average for longer or shorter times. We'll just leave it with the defaults here. And we have it set to collect a zero and a baseline, so we'll say OK.
So to do the baseline, we'll put in our blank sample. Click baseline. It says insert the blank sample. Click OK to collect the 100% transmission baseline scan. Click OK. It is scanning through the range for the 100% transmission. Once it's finished, then if you are collecting zero, if you notice it switches over at this point, that's normal. That's because it's switching from uh, the visible light source to the ultraviolet light source, which is a mercury lamp. So there can be a little discontinuity where it switches over. Um, that's one reason to collect a, a baseline. So now it says block the sample beam and collect and press OK to collect the 0%. So we can use this plate here to block the sample beam. What you want to do is put it in line so that none of the light comes through. Click OK. And you should be collecting basically zero. So I'm going to take out this. I'm going to put in our solution of interest. And now that we're ready, we can click Start. It's going to ask us for a file name. If you do not have a folder already, you should make your own folder under with your username. Which I will do at this time. Um, this allows for multiple samples in a single file, so if you're collecting a series of uh, samples, it will uh, increment them within it, but in this case we just have one sample, so we'll just do sample one. Click OK. It's going to collect a spectrum. Once we've collected our data, if you want to, you can uh, save it as, save data as Probably the most easy to deal with uh, format is CSV spreadsheet. You can save it. You can exit out. Eh, doesn't matter. You can either, to get your data off, you can either open a browser and go to your web mail, or you can open. Uh, the, my computer and to load it onto the GC instrument over here, which is slightly newer and able to browse to more websites. Some of the other options in here, there is uh, thermal, which will monitor a single wavelength as a, a function of temperature. Um, kinetics, which will monitor a single wavelength as a function of time. And then uh, a few other options to do even more, uh, so for example, scanning kinetics, you can monitor spectrum at, over time series as a function of time. Um, so it's different options here. When you're finished, you can close the window, take out your sample, and turn off the instrument.